I heard that the grapevine that you used to be a pastor. Yes. So how did you transition from being um, a pastor to now a businessman? Basically, God called me um, to marketplace ministry. At the time, I didn't really know that that was what it was. I just knew God was calling out the the church and saying I need to go into into something else. And so I moved out of the church. It was quite a colourful and uh, difficult process. Um, ended up, um, you know, really questioning God, going through, you know. Is it going to be half church or what is it going to look like? Not knowing that there is something like marketplace ministry. And I think it's only, um, you know, really during this, the journey with CSI and coming into, into business and realizing what God is doing in the marketplace mm -hmm. that I realized well, there's, there's this, you know, ministry in marketplace. I, I remember, you know, thinking, is this going to be a temporary thing? So it, it actually, I didn't know the concept. Uh, for me, there was church and God and business. Very, 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 very separate, yeah. So Alza, um, what was your reaction when Tim said, I'm leaving ministry and I'm going into the business world? Um, initially, I was quite shocked. <clears throat> I didn't realize um, that he had been feeling this way for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And what's happened is we, we went into a home church kind of setup, and it was quite a tough time because, um, especially financially, it was very, very tough. And it was quite a change of mind. In the, in the ministry of the, of the, the, the home church thing, um, it was so different to normal church, and everything that Tiens, I think, had tried, I don't want to say flopped, mm -hmm. but everything that that he knew would work in a normal church setup, just kept on sort of flopping and almost in a guidance kind of way, God saying, but I don't know if, if this is the right thing for you to be doing, you know, so we had to relook that. It was like a transition, you know, that, that we had to go through and and it was, I, I see it now as the, as the process between, you know, coming out from the mainline church setup, going into this as a kind of a process of, of really coming out and and understanding that God was calling me out the um, full-time pastor ministry thing and and calling me into the marketplace mm -hmm. and um, really saying to me um, very radically you, you need to get out of there mm -hmm. and and I'm saying well God why yeah. and I'm you know and God saying no get out and you know, now it's easy, now you see and you have hindsight and you understand that it was a it was a calling. I can now understand that I'm called to the marketplace yeah. and the ministry happens all the time. It's it's in the marketplace. I see yeah. God working mm -hmm. and it's now easy, but in that time it was it was a total change, uh, turning upside down of our world. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I don't know if you remember the, the moment when I you know, when uh, when God told us to stop taking uh, a tithe. Um, God said to me, "Stop no, taking." No, I don't remember <laughs> that. <laughs> and, and said to us, "Stop uh, taking money." Yeah. Um, God was actually quite more, a little bit more radical. He said um, to me at that time, "You're nothing better than a drug dealer." Yeah. And I said, "God, I'm a pastor. How, how do you, how do you work that one out?" You know. Yeah. And God said, "No, you're, you're nothing. You, you, you give people a fix on a Sunday. You charge them money." And, and they're dependent on you. And I thought, okay, so I stopped uh, taking money. And, and God required us to walk seven months, uh, have a walk of faith without any income. It was income. a bit longer. Was it with the seven months that we, I remember it as a seven month period that we, um, that we had to have a walk of faith, not, not prior to that. Mm -hmm. um, and it is in that seven months that, that um, we had to trust God completely for any sort of income and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it was amazing how I was, I was telling the story about uh, this yesterday to the guys at how at the end of the seven months, remember God said give you the car away which we kept to, to kind of offset our debt yeah. mm -hmm. and then coming to the end of that time, um, it was literally 
Um, we, were, we were three months behind on everything. We were going to lose everything we had. I remember that the, the lowest point for me is buttering a piece of bread for my kids' school and, and realizing this is the last, this is it. And, and that evening, um, God uh, took us to a place where we walked in and the guy simply said to us, um, you're here for a purpose. And we looked, well, what purpose is, how's it going? We're going fine, you know, it's all good. And he said, now, how's it really going? Remember oh, that? And uh, Nati is his name. And, and he... Um, We'd uh, only met him about twice before then. In our lives, you know, we didn't, it's his friend of a friend. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, at that stage, we were, I was like, so against what, you know, God, you've forgotten about us. You've yeah. left us and how can you do this to us? And, and I think God was just trying to really heighten our level of, of trusting him and, and understanding that it's him doing this. Right. And at that moment, he, he, uh, he, this guy said to us, what, what, how's it going? And I just kind of broke down and told him that we were really in bad, bad place, like lots of debt. And he, he called his wife over, he took his checkbook out, and he said, how much do you owe? What is the debt outstanding? Uh, God told me to come here tonight to pay you the full amount against your debt. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a check there, tore it out, gave it to me, and said, that's your debt sorted. Wow. And and in that one moment, God just you know just cleaned it all up for us. And then um, a few days later, I was uh, in the marketplace. Wow. Yeah. The verse, yeah. "My grace is sufficient," really became vivid for you. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, and also God's provision, mm -hmm. incredible, incredible provision. That mm -hmm. I think for us, um, and I get quite tearful <laughs> <laughs> when I talk about it. Is God just provides constantly and I think even in this whole process that has been such an amazing journey and I remember being very angry um, I think at Tiens and at God and at everybody and I didn't want to ask Tiens so now what are you going to do now you know <laughs> and, um, he's, we went to O'Brien somebody said um, so, so I hear you out of the ministry and Tien said something so profound for me he said and that maybe as a wife that's what I needed to hear he said I have now I'm not in the ministry I knew God in the church and now I'm getting to know God in the workplace and that to me just answered so many questions that I had because in my mind he'd just forgotten about God totally but here he's bringing God and he's in a situation where he can um, she got with the guy that's welding or the yeah. guy that's hammering or whatever um, and on such a non-threatening basis you know mm -hmm. it was actually um, an amazing I really I, I didn't understand I, I had no clue about marketplace ministry I thought you know market to be Christian you go and you know you, a real good Christian company would pray and have a, like a Bible study yeah. you know and that would be you know they won't have too many corrupt morals kind of you know there will be a decent business people that's about it mm -hmm. that uh, I mean I've preached at business people for 16 years mm -hmm. and and I now understand that you know the the marketplace is where it's at. That is where um, ministry happens. That's where God's doing uh, His thing. Not that there's anything negative about the church, um, but it is. It is. You know, this is where we spend most of our lives, anyway. You know, and, and so this is where God's moving, and He's He's doing amazing things in the business place. And how did you meet Gary? How did you become involved with CSI? I, I'm a teacher, a pre-primary teacher, and um, I had two of, of Gary and Lorraine's schools came through my class. I taught them, Kayla and Shelby, and we always shared, as parent-teacher relationship, always shared stuff about God, and I just found the Prothero such an amazing witness of God, and, and, and their lives just shine you know their lives just shine Jesus and um, one day uh, Tiens, I could just see Tiens was not in a good place mm -hmm. so I spoke to Gary and um, he came in and dropped the girls uh, it was the youngest one Shelby well the, six, the six, middle one Shelby and I just sort of by the way said you know are you 
is there anything available or if you hear of anything somewhere in the market do you because i understood that he was meeting with a lot of people for breakfasts and things um sort of market related things so i said business related i said if you ever in a situation like that won't you give us a call mm. and because tense is available to do anything that was on the <laughs> that was on the thursday um, night and the friday morning Tians had a call and uh, Gary called Tians in for an interview and he said, um, you know, I want you to go home and speak to Elsa and ask her to, both of you, sit down. And he set up a, um, like a balance sheet or something, some budget thing that how, your, how what you need to survive on. Mm -hmm. And we sat down. And we sat with this budget and I thought, we looked at what we need and what we had and how, and we thought, how on earth did we survive? <laughs> we just both burst out in tears because we just couldn't believe how good God had been for so long and yet we didn't have even a third of what we needed, you know, we weren't getting a third in. I think my salary was quite stable. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then the next... Yeah, after Gary's call, I basically went in and, and at that stage, um, there wasn't a vacancy or anything. We just had a conversation and, and it sort of ended up as, well, you know, let's explore this and, you know, come in and, and uh, see what you can do. And I was like, I remember driving there thinking, uh, post the interview and just this conversation we had um, that you know it's, it's probably just a, I'll just do it for six months just to to kind of find not knowing that I was already in the right place just and I was formulating this this little thing to say to Gary that you know it's, uh, I'll, I'll come and, and work for a couple of months just help to help you, go, help you guys <laughs> out and you know just you know not to commit really and mm -hmm. because I still at that stage thought it was ministry and I'm just, this is just a kind of a transition or something that was happening. Um, and, and it was at that, you know, that journey's start that I realized that this is it. This is where God has called me to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the last four or five years have just been revelation in that area as, as to how, um, uh, what the marketplace ministry is about, yeah. um, what the kingdom of God and, you know, and the, the, establishment of the kingdom of God in, in the business world is all about and, um, and God has just opened all of that up to me and uh, to us really and, and it's still I mean it's still uh, it's still for us a hard journey to there's still a lot of things that you that you kind of chew over you know um, he never gives you yeah. all yeah. that you're right just yeah. the next step so. um, I'll never forget that night can I share about the whole seat of the whole we looked on the internet because mm -hmm. <laughs> says it's in the solar industry. Mm -hmm. So we go on the internet and Tians goes, well, I didn't really even know where the geezer in the, sat in the roof. <laughs> he says, and I've got a manufacturer and distributor. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, that was, that was also an amazing provision because, you know, from somebody coming from the ministry where you really don't fix the geezer, Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, looking at what is expected in this job that he needs now mm -hmm. and what his experience is and we looked at it and we said how great is God to be able to sort out a job where let's say there were 10 requirements for that job and Tians I think had maybe people skills <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he didn't even have the right um, degree, you know, mm -hmm. and how he's, I've just personally seen him grow and just be so excited and there's a, an, a, a light that just started flickering again in him that mm -hmm. was so amazing to see, you know, yeah. and I also um, something that happened that just confirmed it for me was when, they, when he started with CSI they were in another factory and as they moved, Tian had to help with a move, um, he said that the first thing that they put up on the property was a chapel. Mm. And I thought, you know, what a witness um, in terms of your business mm. to put God first. That to me was just a, um, 
a witness that this is the right place to be in. This is the place where God is going to be, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think the CSI journey has really been a journey that, that, you know, we all have discovered what, and still discovering what, you know, marketplace ministry and kingdom business is about because we, you know, we, at that stage, I think the idea was along the lines of, um, you know, pray, have a, you know, Bible study, do a couple of, you know, Christian type of things at, at work and call yourself a, a godly company. Mm -hmm. And you know, obviously Gary's story, Gary, Gary and Lorraine, um, you know, had to come to that place where it was, this was God's business. Yeah. And that, you know, and that then what follows from there is, is very different to having a couple of, you know, Christian things sprinkled on top of a business. Right. And where the business fundamentally says, God first. Yeah. And this is, um, this business belongs to God and, and is directed. And, and if God says, close it today, we'll close it today. And, and, and it's the unpacking uh, of all of that and understanding of that and understanding that that uh, once that is true, if that is true, then what follows is, is all these um, uh, kingdom things that, that we, you know, we read in scripture, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, and where God says it's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And you then look at the business and that, and you say, oh, okay, now, now we, now we on to what it really means, and and to see, you know, the fruit and the transformation in people's lives, it's the testimonies that we heard, you know, of people's lives being transformed that never would set their foot in church, yeah. mm -hmm. on down the business place, mm -hmm. and we would, um, there's an opportunity. We we at one stage um, had dealings with 300. You know dealerships. That's mm -hmm. our that's our people. You know that's our our parish. You know that we would have a a witness into, mm -hmm. and and I think we we just at the you know, really at the surface scratching the surface at this stage of what it's going to be mm -hmm. all about to do you know business God's way or kingdom business. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. So what's the biggest revelation you received so far from doing this um, from a client's perspective? Um, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many gigabytes have you got? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to sound simplistic, but just the power of, of spending the time with God repurposing, you know, saying simply, God, what do you want for this business? You know, it, it is um, one of the companies that I'm responsible for now in this year's our group is at its infancy and it is it's so amazing to right now to be at that place to say god what is your purpose for this business and god is repeating that mm -hmm. you know we we often um a good friend and a kind of colleague of mine always says you know don't ask god uh, you know to bless the work that you're doing but do the work that god is blessing mm -hmm. you know so in other words find god's purpose for right. the business first and then you know, then you know, the rest follows. Where we often do what we want to do, mm -hmm. and then say, "Oh God, just bless us! You know, bless our business, bless our decisions, bless mm -hmm. the things." And so the most significant thing is, is that for me, right. saying, "God, what do you want for this business?" Right. And then the rest kind of follows suit. You know. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. And is there anything else that you want to add about this week? Personal testimony, miracle. <laughs> I think for yeah. me, it's been it's been just so good to see um, just Tiense's reaction. I haven't been involved yet yeah, because of work, but um, just to see how excited he is, and that to me, as a wife, you know, because I see myself in a supportive role, um, it's just good to know that that where he is at and, and how excited he is about the business. And it's a, you know, I think all of our um, desires are to be in God's will. Why would you want to move out of God's will if it's such a perfect will to be in, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think you know, the more we can move towards that, the better. Beautiful. Well, I pray that God would bless, you know, everything that you touch tremendously.